an option. Um, it should have never been an option. And that if you stay silent, if you take the road of being in that neutral position that you are taking a side, you're taking the side of the oppressor instead of standing with me, instead of standing with your black counterparts in America. Um, and that's not okay anymore. Uh, silence is a privilege. If you have the ability to stay silent, you are privileged because it, it doesn't directly affect you. But for the minorities in this country, for black people in this country, they don't have that choice to be silent. We have to fight for our lives. And that is what is at stake is our lives. Um, so a lot of, I've heard the word dramatic a lot over the last week and nothing has made me more mad because this isn't dramatic. You're, we're not, cities burning isn't dramatic. People going out and peaceful protesting is not dramatic. People asking you to speak up and use your voice is not dramatic because this affects their lives. It affects the lives of their children, of them personally, of the next generation of children, and the generation that came before them too that was fighting the same fight that we're fighting today in 2020. It's not dramatic, it's necessary, right? Absolutely. It, one of the things that I can imagine is extremely frustrating for you, um, because I, I find it extremely frustrating, but how do you explain what saying all lives matter means at this point? It's, it's no different than you spitting in my face. That is what all lives matters mean. Black Lives Matter is, is not a terrorist group, as that orange man in office would say. Um, it is saying that all, saying that all lives matters is a privilege because all lives aren't being taken right now. Black lives are being taken at the hands of the people that are supposed to serve and protect the communities. Black lives are being taken, not, not all lives, black lives. So when you say all lives matter, you're spitting in my face and telling me my life doesn't matter. It's like, it's like, um, it's like saying, oh, I'm gonna go, uh, this house is on fire, I need to go help. And a person saying, well, well my house needs help too. But your house isn't on fire. Yeah, but my house matters too. But this house is on fire. Do you, do you not see the flames and, and people inside burning? Yeah, but my, my, life, my, my house matters too. It doesn't. Right now, in, in this very moment, your house does not matter. The house that's on fire matters. So that is the same thing we are facing today. All lives don't, uh, does not matter at this very moment. Black lives are being taken at this very moment. And so for that, they need attention. This, this movement needs attention because not all lives are being taken, black lives are. You said it's so spot on, right? It is a statement based in privilege because it's like, hey, no, no, what about me? What about me? And it's always about like me, there's this privilege, like no, it's not about you. It's not taking away from you. Yes, it is. And that's the biggest thing is that it is not taking away from you. You are, you are being selfish and saying, well, my life matters too. Yes, we understand that. We know that. White America, your lives matter. But, but Black America, minority America, those lives do not matter because they're continuously taken time after time, even if it's filmed, even if, it, even if it's seen, and nothing is being done. Nothing is being changed. So when, when you say all lives matter, it's, it's the selfish part of our country that unfortunately is what it is. But um, that needs to change. You know, we need to be able to care about one another um, in our lives and, and, and to be able to, to care about someone that doesn't look like us and someone that wasn't, you know, had the same path walked in life as us. Uh, it, it, so yeah, all lives matter, you're spitting in my face. Uh, what kind of reaction have you gotten from your article? It's, um, it's really cool because I, you know, typically when you write on a, on a controversial topic, you get more hate than you do love. And um, so I was extremely surprised of how much love um, I've gotten and how much support I've gotten from it. Um, and, and a lot of that love has come from white counterparts that I haven't seen before. So um, while, while I say, and we're continuously fighting for this, I think we are taking a step in the right direction because I think there are people that are not staying silent anymore. That being in that neutral area, they understand isn't okay anymore. Um, that right is right and wrong is wrong and that they're using their voice and I think you're seeing that shift even if you look at um, you know the peaceful movements that have been happening there's a lot of white people and, and that really warms my heart because as a black person 
we've tried everything. We've tried everything from peaceful marches to sit-ins to Colin Kaepernick kneeling during the anthem to uh, media blackouts to wearing t-shirts. We've tried and it hasn't worked. So we need our counterparts to step up and to use their voice because systematically their voices matter more. And systematically they can make the most change. So um, it's not enough just to stand beside me now. It, I need your voice. You touched on the violence, right? And I think it's something that um, obviously no one wants to hear, no one wants to see violence, but there's that quote, right, from MLK about why, why is rioting happen? And you just said, we've been doing this for so long. Black people mm -hmm. have been doing this for so long and nobody has done anything. Look what we keep seeing over and over again. Um, with that in mind, what do you say about the violence that you're seeing in the protests, but also the agitators who are interfering with the message of the protesters. Yeah, um, for for me, uh, I do. I take the MLK route of you can't drive out darkness with darkness. Only light can do that. You can't drive out hate with hate. Only love can do that. And uh, but I do think you're seeing the Malcolm X's of a lot of people and understanding that we live in a capitalist country uh, where they really only hear you and they see you when their pockets are hurt. Um, and, and, and so after MLK was assassinated, there was riots around the country causing $47 million worth of damage to our cities. And that's the only reason that the Civil Rights Bill was even passed is because of that $47 million in damage. So when people are complaining about the, the riots and the looting and the burning of cities, understand that while it might not necessarily be what I do. I don't condone it. Um, I understand it. And I understand that, that, that aspect of it. So uh, riots are the voice of the unheard. Is that what MLK's uh, quote is? Or the unseen? Sorry, I just mute myself. Yeah, riot, riot is the language of the unheard. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and, and so when you're talking about, we've done everything that we could possibly do the right way. And we still aren't being seen. We still aren't being heard. So now we're gonna make sure you see us. And, and that's why the riots and, and the burnings are happening. Why I might not condone it and why I might not do it, I understand it. And, and then uh, I hate that uh, when people say, well, the, the looting and all that is taking away from the actual movement. The looting is such a minuscule percentage of what is actually happening. You look at the peaceful protest, there's are thousands, hundreds and thousands of people I think yesterday, every single state in the country protested in some form or another. So to focus on these small opportunists that are taking advantage of this chaos in, in our country right now and stealing and looting and, um, and saying that it takes away from it is like, it, it's so hypocritical because those are the first people to say, well, not every cop is bad. Well, not every cop is a bad cop. We, are, we understand that, and I understand that. And just because, uh, you know, one cop kills a black man doesn't make me think that every cop is bad. Uh, and, and so in this, you shouldn't think that just because a small percentage of looters are taking their opportunity and advantage of this movement, don't let it take away from what, the, what is so beautiful that is happening across our country. The hypocrisy that you said, it gets me so frustrated. It's like we have people right human nature has this like pride of saying i can't change my mind i can't i am right and you get all this new information and it's okay to change your mind right but people yes. just they they're like no they're like, yeah it's in it's embedded in in us and uh um i heard a good quote from um alicia yesterday and it says it's not only about educating and learning but it's about unlearning too, because we've been programmed, not only you know, being taught in our houses and being this way systematically for, I'm 28, so for 28 years, I've thought this way, I've thought this way, I've thought this way, and now all of a sudden I have to shift my perspective. And while I might be open-minded and open-hearted, that's not the reality for a lot of Americans. And that's not the reality for a lot of white Americans. But all I'm asking you is to have an open heart and an open mind and understand that the reality for you is different for the reality of black people in America. And it has been that way for the 400 years when y'all brought us over on slave ships. Like that is the reality. 
the reality is, gosh, we talk, we can talk about immigration and all that and the wall. We stole this land. We came here illegally and we stole this land. And then we took advantage of the Native Americans. We raped them. We stole from them. We took over. And then we brought slaves over. And um, what makes me so frustrated is, too, is people make this seem like it's that 400 years ago that this is, you know, this is in our past. This is history. It was 50 years ago that we were still burning and lynching black men and women. I, I like we have grandparents that lived through that time, so it's it's not far off. Have we made improvements? Like a minuscule amount, but there, yes. But we still have a lot of ways to go. Your silence is a knee on my neck. An incredibly powerful essay on the Players Tribune and Washington Mystics forward Natasha Cloud joining us. Thank you, Natasha. Thank you so much.